This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on October the 3rd, 2016. In this edition, James will be looking at the basics of the keyboard and the mouse. This edition of Computer Club Lesson was brought to you by the Binary Guys. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is the appointed hour. I'm glad to see some new people in the room today. Um, and so James is going to start us off uh, with uh, really the, the basics of what a keyboard is and how to use it. Um, also the mouse, he's going, to, he's going to talk a bit about the mouse. And uh, we've managed to do some things to make things a little easier for you to see. Uh, you'll see that uh, we have some big pictures up on the screen here, so things should be easier for you to see as James talks. And uh, if something is confusing for you, or you want him to explain a little further, stop him. Say, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he will, any hums and uhs? And, and he will ex <laughs> gladly stop and do a what? All right, with that, uh, James, you're up. Um, good luck with that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so yeah, today's going to be pretty boring and straightforward because um, keyboards and mouses, well, keyboards in particular, have been around for a very, very long time since typewriters. And I'm sure everyone here has at least dabbled in typewriting. So. The first thing I'm going to talk about are the mouses, or the mice, or whatever yes. proper term it is. Um, so there's two different kinds. There's laptop mouses and universal mouses. And if you have a laptop, the touchpad right here, or trackpad, depending on who you ask, is the mouse and then these are your left and right mouse buttons um with some lap laptops like ours uh you have this small little rubber dot in the middle of your keyboard that is also a mouse um with these being the left and right mouse button. Um, the the difference between the touch pad and what I call the in keyboard mouse is the touch pad you always you can only go from here to here and you have to keep relifting your finger, move it somewhere else and it's it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> with with these they're slight slightly more easier where you can just point it in the direction and it will keep going and you don't even have to move a finger <laughs> you just have to wiggle a little bit uh, so not all laptops have this it's mainly Dell's and Lenovo's um, they are normally have this while the others don't really but if you don't like the trackpad and you don't like this, no, don't. You, you can use a universal mouse, which is just a USB mouse. They can plug into anything that has a USB and can pretty much move anything on the screen. I don't have an open USB either. Oh, yeah. oh. So they only go in one way. Um, for laser pointers, the laser will turn on you, so you know it works, and I'll just use my hand. You can um, pretty much control everything with as a normal desktop if you don't, or in some cases, the trackpad just doesn't work anymore. So, 
This yeah, is that's a, a good thing to know on your laptop. If your trackpad stops working, go to the store and buy a mouse because they are exactly the same thing. I can't use their thing. What's that? The mouse or the trackpad? The one on the one. Of, yeah. I yeah. can't so, use that. It's all over the place. I can't control it. It might be better to use this as they, they're a lot simpler to use and you have a lot more control. Uh, so, um, as, as I said, tra uh, desktops don't have trackpads or touchpads, they only use these. Um, you can find a, many different ones to have different variables, like this one just has the simple two buttons that we all know, left and right. But some have multiple buttons, so when web browsing, you can just hit one button and it goes back to the previous page or the next page. Or as I showed at the beginning, before the class started, you can have buttons, like 20 buttons. I would don't recommend those for anything. Um, and the other thing to know about universal Universal mouses are this wheel right here. Pretty much all universal mouses, except for like very very old ones, um, have this uh, scroll wheel. And what this does is allows you to on a web page or something with a long text that goes off screen. You don't have to go to the side of the window and scroll down. You can just scroll the wheel and it will go down or up. Now, as far as I know, every mouse that has the scroll wheel also has a middle mouse button, which is the scroll wheel itself. You click that and I will actually demonstrate it. Just go. I need a browser. That was a search for Apple Pie. So with this middle mouse button, if you click it on something that you can scroll, you can set an auto scroller. And this, you can just read it at your own tempo. You can set it to go faster or slower depending on where it is to where you clicked. So, I'll set it to a very slow pace. And you don't have to touch the mouse anymore. You can just read it as it go. Now, how do you set the auto scroll? Let's go right back to the beginning. There you go. So, when you're on a web page that has that has more and you can scroll down if you click the middle mouse button anywhere on the screen you'll get I'm trying to, this little circle with four direction loops if you move the mouse in one of those directions it will automatically scroll in that direction if I want to start scrolling back up direction you want. Yeah, you just move the mouse to the direction and it will auto scroll. And you can move back up if you want. On some web pages, um, you can scroll left to right. So, again, you could set it to there. Or on a Dianical if, again, if they have the left and right. And to turn this off, you just click the middle mouse button again. And it stops where it is. How are you controlling the speed? The speed depends. Now some are some mouses are slightly better, and it keeps the essentially the um, where you originally clicked on screen, and based off of where you go, the farther just go to, to the top, the farther you are from that starting point, the faster it goes. Oh, okay. So, um, on a very long page, you can go at blinding speeds that, if, good luck reading. Or you can go at a nice small pace if you're me and 
can only we read one word per minute. I'm very bad. <laughs> um, so that that's the advantages to having uh, the universal mouses, um, the scroll wheel. Other than that, the laptops and the laptop trackpads and the universal mouse are pretty much the same. Now, again, I don't know if this works. We'll find out. No, no, no. I don't know. Oh, okay. So, with some um, laptops that have that uh, rubber button, the inboard key, uh, inboard mouse. Um, they'll sometimes have what is a another scroll wheel. This middle button. Now, if it doesn't act like a normal scroll wheel on here, you would have to just press it down and then move the trackpad in the direction you want and it will just scroll down with it. Um, so the example of that would be... Now it's harder to get the speed for this just because of how delicate the rubber is. And it's very janky, so... Um, universal mouses are most of the time the way to go. The only time you use really the trackpad is if you want to take it out to the outside and type or do things. I don't go outside. <laughs> so, um, we call him the troll that lives in his mom's basement. <laughs> sometimes you're a basement. Let's, let's be honest here. I'm sometimes in your basement. Huh? <laughs> yeah, sometimes my basement is <laughs> And I like it there. I don't, I don't, I don't burn. I like it there, man. It's my own little world. No one bothers me. You're lucky. Well, you should see the setup he has. He has this big screen TV. He has a couch that turns into a bed. Okay. He has this big box, not so far from the bed, that's full of chips. And, and he has full-on, high-speed internet, he does not have to leave the basement. <laughs> hey, if it works. The only time I have to leave the basement. No big box of games there? Oh yeah, I, the, I, I have like a thousand <laughs> games. <laughs> and it's not even an exaggeration. Maybe he's spoiled. Uh, well, most of my games I bought myself. So I spoil myself. Uh, but the now this is where the boring part's going to come in. We're just going to talk about what each mouse button does and okay. so on. So I already talked about what the scroll wheel does. Now the right button is the right button on the mouse, and if you click it, you get the uh, obligatory. These are all your options, and this is what you can do more than the left click. Yeah, the technical word for it is is the uh, root <laughs> I had it in my head just a second. It is called the right mouse button is called contextual. In other words, um, depending on the page or the application you're in. The, the, the computer knows what application and when you click right mouse button, the right mouse button entries may change uh, depending on what kind of program or page you're on. That's why they are contextual. Okay, the left mouse button is quite something different. It does actions immediately. Yeah, so for example on the picture, uh, you will get slideshow, edit, rotate, but on a website, 
it'll get reload back forward. Oh. So it all changes. Or you can translate to English. I thought it was already in English. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> Whatever floats you up there. Uh, and then, so the right click is good for copying, pasting, um, deleting. deleting, renaming files, <laughs> all sorts of neat and wonderful things. We've always said that right mouse click is your friend. If you don't know where to go next, just on a wild guess, right mouse click on whatever you're doing and you'll find more things to that you're able to do. Right click is your friend. Yeah. Uh, like we call it right click and left click. Um, it's mainly why I wanted to do this because we could say right click this, right click that. What the hell is right click? Yeah. yeah. Um, so left click does, as Scrappy said, all the actions, the immediate actions. So I want to see um, apple pie recipes from Kraft. So I'll click that and it will instantly, well, not instantly, but it will do the action to load it. And then uh, I want to go back. I didn't like that. Or so you can highlight um, items, as I call them, <coughs> just anything on your desktop screen. You can also um, open files by double clicking the left mouse button. So that will open your file. <coughs> or the left mouse button also moves an item if you left click and hold and then just move your mouse to where you want to go it will follow and drop in the nearest place it can the other thing is like if I want to move half of this instead of doing it one at a time I can left click and hold and move the mouse over the selected area and move all those at once and mess out grandpa's computer. Split them back. <laughs> yeah, I woke up today and he was like, change everything back that you did yesterday or last yeah. week. I'm like, I don't remember what I did last week. <laughs> so um, the other thing is uh, if you're in text, do we have any open text here? No? Alright. I'll just right click and make a new text file. Just to prove the point. So, you can, there we go. You can even highlight a certain text that you like. You can right click and copy that and paste it everywhere just paste it everywhere or you can cut and copy and so you can highlight what you want like i like this i want to save this as its own thing so again apple pie let's just say you f found the best recipe from chef michael smith wherever he is i guess it's that guy and you like the ingredients or whatnot, but you don't want to keep searching. You can just highlight the text, copy it, and paste it to anything that can hold text, and save that so it's always available to you. What holds text? Where would you put it? In a text document, like, like a no, notepad, like no or pad, a word pad, word pad oh, okay. Microsoft Word. Okay. PowerPoint. Um, so that's pretty much what uh, left click does, or the left mouse button. Um, the other thing that I needed to talk about that Grandpa suggested was uh, the mouse cursor icons. And those are essentially 
this little triangle right here. Depending on what you're over and uh, what that object particularly does changes the icon. So I need my text document again. So if I go in somewhere that becomes text, or I can write text, it turns into an I, a capital I. So I know where to click. I can click in there and add more things. Um, I can't, maybe apple pie pops again. Yeah, there we go. Now if you're over something that, like a link that makes some, a change in the current, current viewing or is an action of some kind, it will turn into a hand that's for some reason holding things like this. I'm assuming so you can be like, I want this one. Uh, there's many different things. Um, let's try to quickly find some here. Oh yeah, changing window sizes. This one can be okay. Why is your thing so small? <laughs> so, if you go to the edge of a window, it will turn into two arrows that will go in two separate directions, and that can be either diametrically. Uh, horizontal or, or sorry, horizontal or vertical and you just left click and hold and drag your mouse and it will enlarge the screen or shrink the screen depending on how you want it. Um, that pretty much covers the mouse. Um, the next thing are just uh, the keyboard, which is only seven items that I'm going to deal with. But as I said before, keyboard's been around since typewriting, and they haven't changed really in format uh, since then. So if you work the typewriter, you can work a keyboard. As uh, I have it in my notes, and Grandpa told me, um, the keyboard is just like typing on a typewriter, but instead of typing on paper, you're typing on the screen, which can be your paper. Uh, and what, what I personally like about the keyboard is you can literally navigate the entire windows um, without touching the, a mouse. Uh, ever, <laughs> really. Um, that only happens when you know what each button on the mouse do or on the keyboard does and how it affects um, the computer. I used to be able to do it. Uh, I can't do it on Windows 10 for some reason. <laughs> Is yeah. that when it says scroll, then it says equal F1 or F2. Uh, yeah. Instead of just scrolling, if I press wherever it says, you get the same result. Yeah. Um, we're going to probably talk about um, next week maybe um, keyboard shortcuts, um, which helps you just navigate and do things just on your keyboard without having to stop and move the mouse, um, but I'm just going to talk about essentially shift, enter, the arrow keys, caps lock, tab, control, and start menu, and where they are on your keyboard. So keyboard layouts haven't changed at all. They're not even that different from laptops to desktops. Uh, so, I have a keyboard here, I'm just going to zoom in, there we go. Uh, so, shift, which is located next to the Z key and 
Um, whatever those are. <laughs> <laughs> the underscore and minus B. <laughs> They're typically on the bo bottom line of the QWERTY uh, keyboard. <laughs> and are either symbolized by the word shift or uh, just an arrow pointing up. And essentially what shift does is uh, it makes capital letters um, or lowercase letters or changes the numbers to f uh, from five to percent sign or question mark to or slash to question mark and semicolon to colon. Those are all the things that the shift key would do on a manual typewriter. Yeah. If you remember back, they have not changed uh, those things. And as a matter of fact, uh, the uh, the arrow that is showing going to the right at the top of the keyboard is the tab key. Okay. Now on a, on a manual typewriter, you would set the tabs manually. You can do that with this. Uh, there is a way to set the tabs manually, but they're they're usually set in increments uh, of ten, uh, 10 spaces. Um, and so those, those kinds of things that you can remember from a manual keyboard are on this keyboard. This is called a 104 keyboard. Because if you add everything up, the keyboard will do 104 things. Some, some a bit more because as uh, like I said about mouses, um, you can get ones with certain buttons or or more. Um, so most normal keyboards, like this, is pretty a basic keyboard. They'll have the query, the number pad, arrow keys. Um, I don't know why I'm showing you this one. It's right there. <laughs> I just picked it up. Uh, so the number pad, um, the insert, delete, and all that. Uh, others you get the um, you can get keys to open your mail or open the internet uh, explorer or file explorer uh, or calculator or pretty much anything that you would have to go and click for and so the shift key does that the end key um, again same as the typewriter, you would hit enter and it would go to the next line of text and then the next. Or um, for computers, you can, if except is already highlighted, you can just hit enter and it will um, confirm what you have selected. Uh, the arrow keys. Uh, I don't think arrow keys are on keyboards or typewriters. No, that's part of the extra things that it does. Yeah. <laughs> so, as a, back in the day of typewriting, once you made a mistake, it was there for good unless you yeah. had white out and slapped it all over it. Um, so computers are nowadays are a bit different. So, um, Kirk. Currently, um, my I'm typing from here, but with the arrow keys, I can control where I get um, where I went. So let's say I made a mistake over here. I could fix that mistake or add something into it. Or if I had more text, I could go back up, navigate some more. Um, with nav, it can even navigate. So if I open up the start menu and start. So, moving the mouse pad, you'll get these dotted lines, and this is what you currently have selected. So, I can open up Mozilla Firefox, which needs updates. There we go. And I never had to touch the mouse for that. Um, caps Lock is located above the Shift key and I think was there for the typewriting days. 
I wouldn't know. I only play on a typewriter. Uh, and so you would uh, hit the caps lock key, the light turns on, and everything is now capitalized. And if you're sending text messages, everyone thinks you're yelling. <laughs> uh, hitting the caps lock again turns it back off. And I don't know why you would want to do this, but because shift makes everything opposite, so I have caps locks on, I can hold shift and now I'm on lowercase. I don't know why you want to do that, and why they programmed it, but why not? Um, so we do have the tab key as well, and that's located above the caps lock key. And essentially what the taps key does is it uh, makes an indent in any typing. So if you're typing, you can have 10 spaces start and type from there. Or um, again, for navigating, you can um, tap to the different options that are available. So like, okay, cancel, uh, save, don't save. Uh, and tabs are really good. If you shift tab, it will tap backwards. Uh, and I don't think it makes an end-to-end -end backwards though. It probably gets rid of it though. Um, so the control key, I'm not really going to talk about now. Um, but the control key is typically underneath each of the shift keys. And it either says control or C, T, R, L. And that's probably going to be for the next uh, lesson, but essentially what control does is a, a, pretty much every key has a command that you can activate instead of going to that command with your mouse. So if I was uh, typing in a word pad, let me just make a word pad here. And you, oh, you don't have, what is that? That's okay, open document text for work. Perfect, so instead of uh, going and finding the bold, which wherever the hell that is right now, I can hit control B and, it's, and it bolds, or I can do control U and it underlines. Uh, you know, I'll just make the text a bit bigger as well. There we go. Um, so pretty much control, instead of going to, again, wherever the bold and underline is, instead of finding it, you can essentially do the keyboard um, shortcuts. We'll probably talk about that next uh, Next week, unless we find something. Next week, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, yes. okay. Then. That's right. Yeah. Well, he don't tell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't know anything. <laughs> next, next week. Next, next week. You know when you smell the turkey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I get to have two turkeys. Amazing. Um, and the last thing on the keyboard is pretty much the start menu, <clears throat> which. Uh, is typically just four squares uh, next to the control, uh, both control keys. And that allows you to bring up the start menu. So even in Windows 8, um, you could bring up the start screen and you'd still have the start menu. Uh, <coughs> Again, like everything has um, different commands. Like this whole time, I've been doing control windows left and right to change screens. Um, but the start menu 
it's pretty straightforward. You just click that um, and you can find what you want. Now, how many people here are left-handed? About 10 percent. Okay, about 10 percent. <laughs> uh, so there is an option in here for left-handed people. So <coughs> the mouse becomes left-handed. Um, oh, okay. This isn't. Um, it is a pre. What's that word? Prevalent. Pre 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 yeah, that thing. <laughs> not necessary. Whatever. It's not necessary. But uh, they do give you the option. And I didn't know it's quite homes where they have changed the left mouse button to the right mouse button. Oh, geez. And it just reverses um, everything. It just yeah. reverses everything. But it is a nightmare mm -hmm. if you're not used to it. Yeah. So if, you're, if you changed it the first day you had a computer and you changed it over, you're used to it. Yeah. But no one else is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll show the option anyways in case you um, ever want to change it. Why not? Um, so underneath control panel, there's the mouse option. You just click that. And underneath buttons, uh, button configuration, switch primary and secondary buttons. So that's the other name for it. Uh, primary is left and secondary is right. So we, Please don't do that. I will change it back. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> so I changed it. So now if I hit OK, with the left mouse button, it would have worked. Oh, it did work. It's a post Yeah. God, that would be confusing. Sorry. Yeah, so. <clears throat> it didn't change. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? I know. <laughs> I know it's changed. You know why now, eh? Yeah, there you go. So, we're going to change this. <laughs> so, now my mouse is left click for right click and le uh, right click for left click. <laughs> so, like Grandpa said, don't change this if you're used to the no normal method, but. I thought, well, I don't know how many left-handed people are in uh, our class, turns out, only two. That's good. Um, so I was just like, just something for the left-handed people, and it does just reverse everything, but uh, I'll change that back. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Any questions about mouses and keyboards? Yeah. Yeah. I never use the numbers on the side. I use the ones across the top. Is there an advantage to using one or the other? I never use the pad on the side. Typically, um, if you're <clears throat> typing with both hands and don't have your mouse on the keyboard, it's easier um, if you know you're going to type in letters and numbers, you can Type like, <coughs> type like this and use the numbers here. Typically, um, this goes back a long ways to when computers were first introduced into uh, large institutions like banks. Okay, and remember that uh, um, calculations were made on a keypad. Yeah. Okay, and so the the bank clerk, without even looking could make a thousand entries a minute yeah. in a keypad. And rather than have two separate items for the, the, um, the person to use, a, key, uh, a, a number pad and a keypad, they integrated them into the keyboard. Um, and in, in that instance, um, they, they did one thing um, in the computer that made it very difficult to use. 
in the basics of how the computer works, you can get to it when you, when you first boot the computer up. But there is an option in there to turn the number pad on or off on boot up. <clears throat> if you turn it off on boot up, it will not work until you press um, control no. gun locks. Yeah. Until you press the number lock on the keyboard, which is usually right beside the keypad. Then a light will turn on, um, informing you that now the, key, the, the, the number pad works. Um, this can be very, very disconcerting if you're expecting it to work all of the time. Um, and usually by default they are supposed to work all of the time, but that is an option that you can change on any keyboard that you can attach to a computer. As, and the same is true for um, um, for the for the laptop. Um, you'll notice on this laptop it does not have a uh, number pad beside it. It has the numbers across the top. Yes, you can use those numbers, but it also has a keypad associated with the function key. And on this computer, the function key is red or orange. Okay, on most computers, if you look at them, the function key is blue. If it only does one thing. Okay, in this instance, the, the, the function key does um, a couple of things. And if you turn the function key, if you hold the function key on and do a, a, a certain set of actions, it will turn this number pad on so that you can sit there and do uh, number calculations on the on the inboard number pad on the keyboard to your heart's content. If you have an, uh, half an hour's worth of them to do, it may very be well be worthwhile to change it over just to do them. Okay, so uh, that's part of how they made keyboards easier to use in large institutions where data entry was a big concern for the institution. Data entry being people that just sat at their desks and all they did was enter numbers or enter um, text in certain ways. Okay, And that's also where the tab, the tab key comes from. If you watch uh, one of the ladies at the bank going through your um, you ask her to call up your account. She's only hitting really two keys on that keyboard. Tab to tab through everything and enter to um, enter over here to make the, uh, the computer do something. Tab to something to make it do it. All right? It's really fascinating to watch them go. Uh, and they may very, uh, in, in most cases, um, the large institution does not have a Windows set up like this. It does on their computer, but when they turn it on in the morning, it goes to a green or black screen with uh, 80, 80 columns of, of uh, a text and 23 rows. 80 columns across and 23 rows down. That was the earliest um, form of how a, a computer screen would work. It was columns and rows. Yes? Could you go back to the main screen, please? Recently, uh, Windows updated my Windows 10. Right. And uh, I get, excuse me if you want to step on the top, on that bottom left hand corner, it's the very bottom button. Right. Okay, when I used to click that, I get a little screen that would say, Shut down, power off, and so Okay. Now I can't do that. Yes, you can. Yes. I'll be that way, or can you? It's in there. You just have to look for it. Uh, the, what we're talking about here is the Windows icon in the lower left of the screen. If we click on that, um, on on this one, which is, I updated it. So it, it has the latest in uh, Windows 10. Uh, are you talking about Windows 8 or Windows 10? Windows 10. Okay. Um, it is here. It's called power. 
beside it, yeah. Okay, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's two uh, entries up from the bottom. It's uh, your all your all apps or all programs, and then power. And if you what you have to do is you have to click on that power to make to make it show you what other things the power button will do. Okay. Um, and in this case, it will it can put it to sleep. This computer wants to do an update now. Um, it shuts down, or it will uh, update and restart or restart. So it's giving me. Uh, five options sleep update and shut down which I will not do at the end of this lesson I'll just do plain old shutdown and then take it home and let it do the update there um, update and restart or restart so I've, I've got all but you may not have all those options see you may only have three okay. restart uh, shut down and uh, sleep well, it actually it changes on mine. Sometimes. Yeah, it changes to uh, okay. if it has something to do with the yeah. background. It will. It's essentially telling you, uh, okay, you want to shut down now, but here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to load this yeah. update, and I'll shut down when I'm done. You can go on about your business. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about me. So that's uh, that's how that works. Any any other questions about uh, keyboard things here? Does that mean I did a good job? <laughs> yes, you what did. What about the old key that never worked on XP or anything else? The uh, print screen. Never up in the okay. Did they ever? Did they ever? Windows, Windows 10, and Windows 7, and, and even the Vista had something that uh, you really didn't get to know about a lot. No. <laughs> okay. If you touch print screen uh, in Windows. 3.1, 95, 98, or XP, it did nothing. Okay. In, in beyond that, Vista and up to now, what you do is you hold down the Windows key, hold it down, and press print screen. Where are we here? Print screen. Oops. Your print screen is a function, isn't it? You're right, it is. So in my case, it's going to be the Windows key, the function key, and then the print, key, print screen. You see it did something, it faded for just a second. In in my file folder here, um, under pictures, I believe it is, is it? A new folder that was just, it wasn't there five minutes ago, but it's there now. Okay. It's called screenshots. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, on, on this laptop, uh, it was required for me to hold down the function key because the, print, uh, the function key is red and the print screen was red. So I needed to hold the function key and the Windows key to make it work. On this, uh, on this keyboard, all I have to do is just do print, uh, hold down the Windows key and print screen, and it will work. That is really, really handy um, if you want to make a quick capture of something you see on the screen, but you don't want to go through the brouhaha of highlighting and moving it to a text document and open the text document, save the text document, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Is print screen okay. on, the, on the next page? Blah, I don't remember no, 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 that function doesn't work, but on the newer ones it does. Okay, so um, with, with, that, with that simple little keystroke, I now have um, this screen, uh, it's called screenshot, and um, it, the more you put in, the more it will number. Screenshot one, screenshot two, screenshot three. But it's a PNG file. Now that is an old version. PNG is an old version of how you print something. Okay, from print screen. Uh, and so there it is. Now you can capture any any screen or any window. You can make the window full size, as I did, and uh, you can capture anything in it. 
So any text that's on the screen you can capture. So you want to capture a note quickly? This is the way to do it. On your keyboard, your big keyboards, it's just simply hold down the Windows button and touch print screen. And you'll see the screen fade for just a second. Now, go back into uh, go go into your user folder. That's my user folder. That's me. Okay. And in pictures, you will find a screen uh, a screen capture or screenshots new folder in there. And that's where all that stuff goes. Now you can change that. You can change that, but I don't recommend that you do. But if you want to change it to somewhere else, you can read up on it. Okay. Um, so you can highlight this this uh, screen shots folder and right click on it. And when you go to properties, it will give you um, a tab called location. Okay. All right. And once you do that, you can change that location. But I urge you to read up on it first before you do that, because some things will change in the file folder you're, you're putting this into the new location. It, you may want to put it on desktop. You can do that, but just remember that read up on it first. I don't have time to give you all the ins and outs of it, but you can undo that, by the way. You can, you can undo that. Uh, when you when you uh, if you make that change. If I make a screenshot, then if I right click, will it offer me to print? Can I make a picture of it? Yes, you can. Yeah, I was gonna say like if you have a problem uh, and you have a Windows Seven and Windows Ten machine, you can print screen the problem. Yeah, that's so, uh, what I would like to the, be able to do. The, yeah. uh, print the actual picture with yeah. an actual printer. Yeah. Give it to us, that's and we'll true. say, yeah, we have a problem. But remember, remember yeah. what, what it's giving you here is, is a .png. Yeah. So that is, uh, on every printer out there, it is compatible with that printer. So if you right click, um, you get something here on in in this instance called print in the contextual menu, the right click menu. You get print because it knows that PNG can be printed, so it gives you that opportunity. Um, and it, uh, if I click on that, it's going to come up and say, "Okay, the only thing you have here is XPS document reader." So, but it's showing me what it's going to give me. Okay. And I can um, I can change things a little bit. Uh, I should be able to change this um, to landscape. No, to change the landscape. Um, Let me know when you figure that out. Okay, I've changed it to legal, so it gives me more. So now it'll print on 8x14, but you don't have 8x14 to print. Um, so th there are other things to do here, but uh, oh, you'd have to good. fiddle it's, with it for a bit to get it know, right. That is the hardest thing, is to keep the problem on your thing, and then yeah. and yeah. not have to yeah. sit there and go somewhere else and type it all up, and this way it's yeah. very pretty. Failing that, you can do a bunch of print screens, put them on a thumb drive, and then we can see them. That's, yeah. yeah. Also, I... I haven't told Grandpa this, but I figured out a new business plan. <laughs> I, I go in first and say, yeah, you have a problem. I'm not here to fix it. I'm just here to say you have a problem. And then get him to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't fix anything. I'm just a monitor. <laughs> have you been seeing that computer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that, that, that on TV? That's nuts. That's nuts. Yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> yep, you have a problem. You fix it. Well, I'm just a monitor. Yep, there's a robbery. <laughs> How long did it take you to work out that plan? Uh, the moment I saw that, the moment I saw that advertisement, I'm like, I'm doing that every time I've been going. I was like, wait in the car, I got this. 
Okay, any other deeper questions about what we talked about here? Because uh, I've got five minutes to go. <laughs> uh, yes? Well, all the top keys, the FN keys, or whatever yes. they yes. are, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, all right, the, the top keys across the top, the 12 F keys, yeah. they are not function keys. Okay. okay. They are keys that do a function. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh. There is a difference. Yeah, okay. Okay. And it, if you uh, I believe F, on, F5 yeah. is refresh. Yeah. The, the, there, there are really. Um, F11 is full screen. Yeah. F11 is full screen. Uh, so let me just. Uh, we all knew that, right? Okay. So there's there's my and it's not full screen, but if I do F11. Those full screen, but the other thing that it does when you do full screen, okay, where's the navigation bar? Yeah, yeah. It's gone. Okay, so you have to know that you're going to stay in there. You maybe you want to play a game, so you want to go full screen. You're not going to change um, websites to do that, but you can go full screen and get more real estate to play the game. And F yeah. F11 again gets F11 you out or escape. Escape also yeah. takes you out. Yeah. Um, is it Alt F4? Alt F4. Alt F4 kills the program that you have open. Okay, so if uh, it yeah, it closes programs. It kills it kills the one in front of you. Oh, that's the one I use to close the computer up if I can. Sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. <laughs> That too, I suppose. Yeah. But you, your computer's crazy. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's got X's all the time. Every time she talks to me, I got another X. She's got, I got she's, three X. It's the craziest machine I've ever There's seen. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. No good. Yep. Okay. Uh, and so the uh, Alt F4 uh, will close. Um, <coughs> will uh, close the pro. Close the open program you're looking at. It yeah. doesn't close background programs until you close the one in front of it. And then it just goes down the line. Alt F4, you close. You can close them one at a time that way. Um, I think the only good one to talk about is F5, which is refresh. Yeah. Uh, the web browser. Yeah. Or uh, F5 is is and and uh, F5 also works on uh, some Word document programs. Um, depending on the functionality. Of, of the thing that you just did. Inserting a picture into a Word document, uh, sometimes you'll do, you'll do the, pro the process of inserting a picture and it looks like it didn't work, there's just, but there's just a blank uh, at, uh, box there where the picture should be. Do F5 and the picture appears. Because what you've done is you've refreshed the whole document. Okay. So, but that's only if, if you inserted the picture and you look at it and it doesn't appear to be there, but there's a, there's a, a, a box where the picture's supposed to be. Do F5, picture shows up. Would that be on, uh, on an email that you get up that's got an X in the corner? And... No. Okay. Well, that's quite something different. Okay. <laughs> that's a good question. I think I asked this last year and I'm not sure I got it right. I did an email from somebody even the Monty's, yeah. and it's got a picture on it, you know, yeah. that shows something. So I want to share that with somebody else. So when I go to send it to somebody else, I send it, but the picture doesn't show up on them at their end. Yeah, uh, that could be uh, for two reasons. And both of them have to do with uh, how the computer is trying to protect you. Uh, it's, it's trying to protect you, and it's... Um, it may, the, the email package that you were using may very well be incapable of, of what's called inline, um, inline documents, like pictures. Uh, when you have an inline document like a picture, you see it in the body of the email. If it's not inline, it's an attachment. Okay, so sometimes when you send these pictures to somebody, when they get them on the other end, it's coming in as an attachment. The picture's not in the body of the email, it's an attachment. Okay, but that's the computer trying to protect you because um, nasty folks have found a way 
to put executable code inside of JPEGs and, and uh, other kinds of picture options. So when you click on the picture, you are going to execute code and it's going to do stuff to you. Nasty stuff. That's a way to infect your computer. So the computer itself is trying to protect you by saying, are you sure you really want to do this? Give it a little thought before you do, because you may be infecting your own or somebody else's. Uh, when you get an email with a picture, like Don said, that, that is a square box with an X in the corner, somewhere on the on the on the, the page there is an option to show you the pictures that came with the email. The, the computer is trying to protect you by not allowing those pictures to come in and where you click on them and then all of a sudden you execute the code. Okay. It's trying to help you out. If it's trying to help you, take its recommendation. All right, that's just about it, folks. We're done for the day. Thank you so much for coming. And we'll get this up on, uh, on the website or uh, up on YouTube as quickly as we can. And uh, James is going to put all this stuff away. And Fred, I'm going to have a quick look at your computer. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.